question two and this is where we have a beam with a loading of three kilonewtons per meter squared that's dead and live load it's got bay widths 7.1 meters and the beam is located diagonally across the beam is a 533 by 102 universal beam which is a British section and it's figure 2.2.8 where it covers the method the method is to substitute a triangular loading with a universally distributed load and this is to simplify it so that we can use the equations from chapter 2.2 question 2a is the next part of this and we are going to find the triangular loading pattern the values of the loading and after that in question 2b the equivalent UDL so we draw out the plan and we put the beam in diagonally which is 10 meters long 7.1 meters by 7.1 meters the bay width and we show the joists you can see the loading gets aggressively larger from zero to the right hand side and the load spread is taken by uh, half the distance which gives you that if you shade in the area but the actual load is the perpendicular distance to the beam so you calculate the value x and this perpendicular loaded width is 7.1 which is the length twice times sine 45 which comes out at 5 meters and the peak loading comes out at that times 3 kilonewtons per meter squared x times 3 kilonewtons per meter squared which is 5 times 3 and comes out 15 kilonewtons a meter so the loading distribution is 15 kilonewtons per meter as a peak and we can now take this and go on to the next part which is question 2b in question 2b we're going to find an equivalent UDL universally distributed load if you take a reference the book structural engineering art and approximation figure 2.2.8 page 18 and in this you take a uniformly distributed load you find the peak which is W we found in 2A and if you take two-thirds of this this gives you an equivalent UDL from which we can use the simple, simple formulae that we, we know and we calculate an equivalent UDL which is EU and this is two-thirds of 15 15 was from 2A kilonewtons a meter which gives you 10 kilonewtons a meter which is the equivalent UDL so we draw this out on the beam elevation and this is 10 kilonewtons a meter it's a 10 meter span so the bending moment comes out as WL squared over 8 and L is 10 meters 10 times 10 squared over 8 gives you 1 to 5 kilonewton meters is our estimated bending moment from the equivalent UDL and now on to question part 2c and in this we're going to find the deflection due to that equivalent UDL so we draw out the UDL at 10 kilonewtons a meter at a 10 meter span and uh, that's the deflection and the simply supported deflection criterion which is easy for us to remember we know uh, for the typical beam and this is 5 WL to the 4 over 384 EI I is given which is 61,500 centimeters to the 4 or 65 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4 I like to use millimeters and newtons and the modulus Young's modulus is 205 times 10 to the 3 newtons per millimeter squared or MPA Pascal and the deflection if you put out the figures in consistent units 5 times 12 10 times 10,000 to the 4 over 384 
by 205 E3 by 615 E6 and this gives us 10.3 millimeters as the deflection and finally we come on to set question 2D and we draw out the loaded beam and shears at the supports we're going to do this for both cases for the triangular loading we had we had a peak of 15 kilonewtons a meter and we're going to do that for universally distributed load so let's draw out the triangular loading and have a look at the shears the reactions so 15 kilonewtons a meter and from a triangular loading which is peaked on one side it's WL over 6 is on the side with zero loading and WL over 3 where the load is the peak take the UDL 10 kilonewtons a meter we take uh, EU times L over 2 which is the shear at the end and this comes out at 50 kilonewtons both sides so our maximum shear is 50 kilonewtons and this would cover us as, a, as, a, as an overall estimate and this gives an equivalent UDL as a safe approximation it is possible to estimate the UDL is the same as the peak but this doesn't give a conservative shear thank you for listening